The Renaissance was a time of renewal and rebirth. It began in the 1300s and lasted until 1650. It first blossomed in northern Italy and eventually spread northward to neighboring European countries. Throughout this time, people were actively trying to improve upon their civilization and possessed an optimistic attitude compared to the people of the Middle Ages. They were heavily influenced by the ancient Greeks and Romans and studied their aspects of life, art, and architecture to improve upon their own. Feudalism and theology began to break away as humanism and secularism took their place. The Renaissance was an influential time of expansion and learning, which will be forever known as one of the most innovative times in history. Where are we? I don't know. Maybe we should go ask him. Hello, sir. We seem to be a little lost. Yeah, like six centuries lost. Well, this is my house. I'm Niccolo Machiavelli. Nice to meet you. I'm Hannah. And I'm Emily. Did you say we're in Florence? Yes, Florence. This is where I've grown up. It's become a very influential city throughout the Renaissance. Oh, so we seem to have traveled back in time to the Renaissance? Yes, it seems we have. Niccolo, why was Florence so influential? Well, most people relate the success of Florence throughout the Renaissance with the Medici family. They became successful through banking and are patrons of the arts. A patron is, of course, someone who endorses and donates great amounts to the arts. I have met some members of the Medici family. Um, sir, if you don't mind us asking, what, what are, are you, you doing? doing? I'm glad you asked. You see, I'm reading a book to hopefully regain my job. Wait, you lost your job? I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, I worked as a politician. However, I was fired after many people disagreed with my views. I'm a strong humanist, you see, and strongly express my views. I'm writing this book to hopefully claim back my spot while still teaching others how to succeed in politics. What are the common views of a successful politician? Leaders should not be absorbed in fate and should feel no weight of supernatural pressing on the human mind. Ooh, that was good. I'll write that. This painting, The Creation of Adam, depicts humanism in many ways. This shows Adam, who was the first man created by God, reaching out to God. Michelangelo, the artist of this painting, could have been trying to convey the people of the Middle Ages' reliance on God and how they no longer look to him for relief, as Adam is. David, a sculpture created by Michelangelo, portrays the victorious David from the biblical tale David and Goliath. This also shows humanism because it highlights the personal best within people which is what humanism is all about. This first painting was created during the Middle Ages. It is flat and 2D. You can clearly see how the people of the Middle Ages relied on religion. You can also see how the art is not very colorful and the human anatomy is not correct. Also take a look at the facial expressions of the people. They don't seem very enthusiastic to me. Next, take a look at this painting created during the Renaissance. The artists became more advanced and used techniques such as shading and perspective to better their artwork. This is an example of humanism because it shows how people focused on becoming more successful and achieving their personal best. Humanists similar to Machiavelli often shared the same views, that humans should hold the power and not supernatural beings such as the gods. People began to pay more attention to earthly life and the study of humanity or humanism became a major focus of scholarly attention. Humanists believe in reality rather than hoping for a better life after death. The study of theology or study of God slowly became less important. Have you always been interested in politics? Yeah, my father was a politician, however, was not very successful. However, I have been provided with an education. At first, I worked as the secretary of the second chancery, which is a position protecting the territory of Florence. 
Then I became the Secretary of the Council of Ten of War. In this position, I work to scout out potential allies to Florence. I've met some very interesting people along the way. King Louis VII of France, Caesar Borgia, Pope Julius II, Emperor Maximilian II, and Pandolfo Petrucci. I'm sure these moments helped him while learning the prince, don't you think? Yeah. Speaking of the prince, Nicola, what is the title of your book currently called that you're writing? I'm not sure what I'll call it yet. Maybe The Princess? I, I may have a suggestion of what to call the book you're writing. The Prince. Wow, good idea. It has a nice ring to it. Oh, are you kidding me? I thought we were on our way home. That's what I thought. I guess we can ask the man over there where we are. Um. Excuse me, sir, do you have a moment? Well, of course I do. I'm just in the middle of writing one of my plays that are being formed tonight! Oh, sorry. Never mind. Wait, I'm sorry. Come back. I'm just under a lot of pressure. Uh, how can I help you? Um, this sounds like an odd question, but what year is it? Oh, that is an odd question, but we're in the year 1604. You said you're writing a play. You write? Indeed I do. I've been writing for a very long time. What do you write about? Family, love, death, hate, the usual. I'm William, by the way. William Shakespeare. Oh my gosh, it's an honor to meet you. You've heard of me? Well, of course. You're only the best playwright of all time. Can you tell us a little about yourself? I grew up in Stratford-upon-Avon. I had eight siblings. I married a, a wonderful woman named Anne Hathaway. Uh, one of the main reasons because um, we were expecting. Then a couple of months later, we had our first child. Then we had two more, a boy and a girl. However, my son Hamlet died at a very young age. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Thank you very much. In honor of him, I wrote a play, Hamlet, and you can see how they're related. I've been writing plays for many, many years, and then they are performed at a theater at night. Oh my gosh, I'd love to see one. Is there one tonight? Actually, there is. It's called Othello. I would love for you to come see it. Emily, we have to get back. Oh, I, I understand. Good luck getting back. I guess we can stay a little longer. Yay! I don't think we'll have enough time to see your play, but we might have a few minutes to ask some more questions. I'd love to hear them. Can you tell us a little about what you've done so far? So far, I've written 28 plays, and a few of my favorite are Hamlet, Henry VI, parts one, two, and three. You may not know this, but you have affected our lives immensely hundreds of years later. You really have. Oh really? How so? Throughout our daily lives, we have used the words you have created, such as laughable, lonely, generous, and gloomy. You've also appeared in many modern day artwork pieces. Yeah, we save paintings of you everywhere throughout the US. Also, your plays have remained relevant today. For example, many people make references to Romeo and Juliet daily. Alrighty, Emily. We should get back home now. I guess so. Bye, Shakespeare. Thanks for answering all our questions. Bye. As we saw from Machiavelli and Shakespeare, humanism was a common belief of the people from the Renaissance. Yeah, I'm still a little confused about it. Can we review it again? Sure. As we know, people throughout the Middle Ages relied on religion to find hope and relief. <clears throat> Most Europeans are Christians who believed in supernatural beings such as God. However, as the Renaissance developed, the idea of God slowly diminished. People became reliant on themselves and living in the present day and not hoping for a better life after you die. Oh, so overall, people throughout the Renaissance relied less on religion and focused more on everyday life? Correct. And humanists such as Machiavelli also helped spread the humanism beliefs. Humanists are people that choose to focus on people's needs and believing in them rather than God. And people started to learn that they can do what they want and not staying in the class you were born into. Because of humanism, feudalism broke down and eventually became non-existent. Also because of humanism, the middle class developed and merchants became wealthier and capable of buying and selling expensive goods. Businessmen and women became more common and people moved up from their lower social classes. 
Wow, humanism sure did have a lot of positive effects. Humanism has also influenced our independent nature as humans. Today, we are told to excel and to be well-rounded, successful people. All of those ideas were based off of humanism. Wow, humanism is really interesting. Now that we both understand humanism, can you explain secularism to me? Of course. It was the movement that challenged the medieval philosophy to separate religion from politics. What else can you tell me? <laughs> they focused on earthly life rather than heavenly life, and similar to humanism, they affected how we view things today. As we just reviewed, the people of the Middle Ages were fixed on religion and were blind to anything other than God or heaven. However, the rebirth of the Renaissance caused people to expand their knowledge. People began to think differently, and through humanism, people began to display a greater interest in their own lives, which led to the development of secularism. Secularism is often referred to as being anti-religious, however, this isn't the case. In the later parts of the Renaissance, theologists began advocating for secularism and proof that the beliefs of God and Jesus do not contrast with the beliefs of secularism. Secularism is simply promoting the balance of individual interests aside from religious beliefs. It also made people feel more open to exploring different religious views other than Christianity. Since the word renaissance means rebirth, it is ironic that secularism slowly yet surely led to a rebirth of views among the people of Europe. Wow, this has been such a great experience. It really has. I guess it's time to get back now. Guess so. Let's go. Dang it, it was just a dream. At least I got all my questions answered. Hannah, breakfast is ready. Oh, food.